participants over here. Uh, myself, Karthik Enio from Nimbus Bangalore. And uh, along with me, my colleague, Mr. Venkatesh, who will be taking you through the uh, Nimbus training today. And also we'll be having a, a, a sort of a, a formal, uh, We'll, we'll, we'll be just having a formal uh, launch of Nimbus as well as the Elsevier Science Journal Journals today. And along with us, uh, we have uh, Dr. Sija Thomas, our, our Senior Joint Director from DT Kerala. And uh, over to you, Venkatesh. Thank you, Karthik. A very, very good morning to all the participants. Such an honor and a pleasure to be here today. Uh, first of all, thank you for all the participants who have joined the session today. Thank you so much for joining us. And for the next uh, 30, 40 minutes today, we are going to see the kind of uh, 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 e-resources that we have got. And uh, especially in a pandemic situation like today, where we are all connected remotely, we are all connected, connected from homes and hometowns and the users are being spread across um, uh, various uh, locations now. Uh, but here is the platform where we all can access the resources that, uh, that our institutions are subscribing to, and it can be accessed from anywhere, any device. Uh, and I will also take you through how to access this library, how to uh, monitor the users and the usage, the admin dashboard also. Before to that, I would like to, uh, especially, I would like to thank and welcome uh, Dr. Siza Thomas, uh, Senior Joint Director, and also a special gratitude to Dr. Uh, Baiju, uh, Madam, uh, Director in Charge, uh, Direct DT Kerala. And uh, we also have uh, Mr. Vishal Gupta from El Xavier, who will also take us through the live platform of El Xavier Science Direct platform. And uh, welcome you all and all the participants, welcome. And in today's session, what we are going to see is to how to launch this particular digital library and how to access the e-resources and what are the e-resources that is there at our disposal. As library users, first of all, we should, uh, as, as library users, it's important for us to understand what is the content that is available to us and how to access those content is what I'm going to take you through before getting into the platform, we would like to quickly uh, present a small video kind of a launch. We, we are also expecting to do a, a bigger launch uh, uh, with larger participants in the uh, forthcoming day. But uh, today, as we are doing the first session for the year from DTE, we are doing the first session, we would like to do a small launch uh, of, uh, uh, for, the, for the digital library of uh, DTE Kerala. <clears throat> So with uh, all the dignitaries' permission, I would like to share the screen and uh, I would like to run you through the quick video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, now we saw a quick video but now we are going into the uh, important session where we are going to see how to access this practically how to launch this library from wherever you are uh, to quickly i'll again share the screen and uh, i'll take you to the platform uh, karthi can you please confirm me as you can see the screen please yeah 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 it's visible and uh, before the session uh, i would also like to uh, request Dr. Sita Thomas to speak a few words and uh, then we can go ahead with the training. Thank you. Thank, uh, over to you, Sita, ma'am. Yeah. 
Thank you, Kartikeyan. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, please. Yes, ma'am, you're audible. Yeah. A very good morning to team just all the uh, faculty from uh, various colleges across the state of Kerala. On behalf of the Directorate of Technical Education, I deem it a great honor and privilege to address you on the launch of NIMBUS and Elsevier Science Direct Journals for all the nine engineering colleges and 45 polytechnic colleges under this department. Thank you for being here with us on this occasion. With most of our libraries going digital with the subscribed or the open content, it is quite restricting when the access to these digital resources and subscription happen only on campus. Nimbus Online Library is a platform that uh, can integrate with Koha or OCAC services or any digital content as such, and even with plagiarism checker, empowering you with the seamless access to library resources that include ebooks, e journals, lecture notes, databases, conference proceedings training materials, manuals, uh, multimedia content, institutional repository, web content, all those, anytime, anywhere, and on any device through a single login. As we all know, appreciation can make a day and even change a life. Hence, to start with, I remember a bunch of people to appreciate, and I do not know how far I'll succeed by putting it into words. I would like to take this opportunity to express a hearty thanks to Dr. Usha Titus, ma'am, former principal secretary of higher education Kerala for the administrative sanction given to us for effecting this subscription. From the depth of our heart, we also thank our additional chief secretary, Sri Venu IAS, uh, for setting a tone for this effort through the purchase sanction that he has issued that made the entire attempt successful. Both of them deserve a big hand of applause for their unstinted support and guidance extended to all of us at Directorate of Technical Education and in particular for this endeavor. Along with that, if I don't mention the compromises that just has made in this effort, I'll be, I'll be totally failing in my uh, duty of addressing the August audience. When we initially planned for a centralized purchase of Elsevier engineering package, um, for e-journals, as per the instruction from our previous Director of Technical Education, Dr. Indira Madam, I have talked to GIST, and I was not sure whether uh, there'll be um, effective utilization of these journals at some of our institutions. At the same time, we wanted to include all the government engineering colleges, as uh, it was fair to provide equal opportunities to all the students, staff, and faculty from these colleges, even though uh, the number of beneficiaries will be less at uh, some of the colleges. And at this stage, we also realized that some of the faculty from polytechnic colleges were also active in research, and many were doing their doctoral studies. And we thought of including a handful of polytechnic colleges also on a pilot basis. And accordingly, we have conducted a study and identified 18 polytechnic colleges also. And with the nine engineering colleges and 18 polytechnic colleges, we have talked to this team uh, for a negotiated pricing and just has graciously agreed for uh, uh, five is to four ratio in terms of the ratio of the paid to complementary colleges in this uh, centralized purchase. However, when this proposal was placed before the working group for administrative sanction, Usha Tetis Madam was a little skeptical about uh, the selection of 18 polytechnic colleges out of the 45 colleges. Uh, we thought that we could um, convince her with the details in terms of the usage statistics, student strength, and the performance metrics of all these 18 colleges because we were getting the free trial of the subscription at that time. But when the administrative sanction was issued, the administrative sanction was issued just for the proposed amount uh, for a total of 54 colleges instead of 27. And I lost hope. As for me, it was not fair to request for another negotiation to include um, 27 more colleges with no additional amount. And just at that time has taken that challenge to provide us that offer without any extra cost. And um, something that can't be forgotten in our pandemic experience was that we were provided with a trial version that has run for more than um, a year, uh, where one could sit safely at their homes still getting the instant access to the required information in digital form available at their institutions and be able to continue the work as done before. And the effectiveness of the authentic e-resources cannot be compared with the 
effort of trying for comprehension from multiple sources through browsing, as the sources may be individually incomplete and collectively inconsistent. And um, at this stage, my wishes go out to the GIST team and all the participants of this program, who are the institutional in charges or coordinators. And it is my ardent wish that it will be a fruitful session to all of you, and I wish you all the best. And with this launch and training, we are getting the platform, we are getting the resources and the opportunity uh, to make the most of it. As I always mention, any training program is not exclusively for the benefit of those present in the training, but for the benefit of the entire academic community. I request the coordinators to please do train all the staff in your institutions, and please do practice it and make it beneficial to our students. Best wishes and thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for your kind words and the generosity in your words. Uh, as uh, uh, we also would like to uh, thank and appreciate uh, the Directorate of uh, Technical Education for taking such an initiative, responding to the uh, situation. Uh, as we all know, we are all in the situation where we are all connected remotely, but still the uh, knowledge sharing is a continuous process where the, uh, uh, continuously there is a there are knowledge sharing and we are also continually involved in research and uh, learning. In this point of time, uh, the uh, DTE has taken this initiative of creating a digital library and serving the content anywhere, anytime, any device and uh, making it easier for the user to keep the knowledge sharing a continuous and uninterrupted one. How we are doing it, I, as you all know, I'm connecting from uh, Bangalore. I'm not in uh, the institution, but I'm going to access various e-resources that the institution is subscribing to. Now, I would like to split my entire presentation into two different folds. On the first fold, I would like to talk about, as a user, what is the content that is available and how they can launch this library and how they can access this content remotely is what I'm going to talk about in my first fold. In the second fold, I also would like to talk about how, as an admin, you can register, you can monitor, you can, you can uh, manage the users and the usage is what I'm going to talk about. And we'll hand over the session later to uh, uh, Mr. Vishal Gupta, who will also take us through the Elsevier Science Direct platform. Now, to start with, uh, with the platform, uh, at the end of the session, uh, we will also open the session for questions. If you have any questions, you can uh, make a note of it. At the end of the session, we can have a quick Q&A &A session where you can ask your questions and we are will be there to answer your uh, queries and clarifications. Now, we'll, without much of ado, we'll start the session right now and I'll start with uh, engineering uh, colleges. For all the engineering colleges, I, I in fact, I, I request all the participants to kindly make note of these points because these are very important. For the engineering colleges, we have given exclusive link, URL we have given to launch the library. For example, for a college of engineering Trivandrum, cetlibrary.nimbus.com is the link that we have given for college of engineering Trivandrum. Like this, we have given URL for all the engineering colleges, individual links we have given, exclusive links we have given to launch. As you can see here, cetlibrary.nimbus.com is the link that I have applied for the engineering college. For the polytechnic colleges, we are creating one common link because we understand there are more than 40, 45 institutions are there in polytechnic colleges. For all the polytechnic colleges, we will give one single link. Unlike engineering colleges, we have given one link for all the uh, college, uh, each link, each institution will have individual links, but for polytechnic colleges, you will have one common link. And all the users will be given an ID and password. Don't worry about it. We will send out a mail to all the users and the admins about the credentials. The URL will be sent out to you via mail. But uh, in this session, whatever points that we have been giving, we request you to make a note of it. So as to start with the URL, we are talking about the URL link that we are going to launch. For the engineering colleges, it's all different links for each college. And for the polytechnic colleges, we will share a common link. Now, 
to start with we will imagine now uh, it's a, it's a uh, uh, exclusive link please do not note, note down this link but then we will give you we will give you a common link for time being i'm long, i'm i'm going to take you through in this platform itself now as you can see i have i am using this particular platform in google chrome i'm using a preferred browser you can use any browser if you are using uh, 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 firefox you are using internet explorer or google chrome uh, google chrome, chrome chrome is much much uh, user friendly so i'm using chrome and i have launched this particular link for example in in engineering college case you have to use your specific link cetlibrary.nimbus.com for the uh, polytechnic colleges we will share the link the link is not ready yet we will share it soon now the moment the link has been launched, you will be asked to sign in into the platform. When you are signing into the platform, you have to use your ID and password. Now, the second question, what is the ID and what is the password? The ID is your email ID. Your respective email ID is your ID. The password is user at the rate Nimbus for the users. All this presentation I'm doing from a user perspective. For admins, it is Nimbus at 123. For the admins, for the admin ID, it is Nimbus at 123. For all the users, it's user at the rate Nimbus. For example, here in this particular college, I'm using this particular ID that is GWPCK at Nimbus.com. And it's an admin ID. So I'm using Nimbus at 123 is the password I have given. Now I'm signing into the platform. Now we are, we are talking about the ID. Now this ID, email IDs are being registered. Now how to register this and who can register this? We will talk about it when I'm coming to admin dashboard. For now, we will, we will uh, keep it very simple that your email ID is your ID and the password is user at the rate Nimbus. I'm repeating once again, when you launch the link, you have to sign in to the link when you're signing in, your ID is your email ID, your respective email ID or the email ID that the institution is communicating with you. I'm, I'm, I'm giving it for the users. Me as a user, if I'm a student or a faculty of this particular college, government uh, women's polytechnic college, if I'm a user of uh, this particular college, my email ID, if I've given my email ID, that will be the ID. The password is user at the rate numbers. The moment I have given my ID and password, I have launched the entire library. Now you have the library content in your hand. Now, what are all content that you have in polytechnic colleges? The content also differs from polytechnic college to engineering college. In engineering college, you also have your subscribed content. Now, again, I'm signing into CET also, where I'm giving their ID. And as this is an admin ID, I'm using Nimbusat. One, two, three. Now sign into the. So as you can see here, there is an option given to you that is off campus access. As you can see, this word is so self-explanatory. Off campus access. You don't have to be in the campus to access these resources. You can access even outside the campus. This is just a beginning. This is just a start of, of, of this digital library. In the future, we will add more and more content to the platform. Please watch out the platform for more content to be added. Now you can see the difference. Now you have Science Direct in uh, Government Women's Polytechnic College. And in on the other hand, for the College of Engineering Trivandrum, you'll go to off-campus access. You'll get to see there are two more resources that is available. What are these resources? Apart from Science Direct, for the engineering colleges, I, 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 I bring this to your kind notice. For the engineering colleges, if you are subscribing to any content apart from Science Direct, you may have to uh, reach out to us and we will integrate to the platform. For example, College of Engineering Trivandrum is subscribing to ASME and ASCE also along with Science Direct. Science Direct, yes, we are getting with the platform, uh, with the DTE, uh, we are already getting Science Direct. Apart from Science Direct, if you are subscribing to any other content like IEEE or, or you are uh, you're subscribing to Scopus or you are subscribing to uh, uh, ProQuest or any other content, please reach out to us. We will integrate that content also to the platform and uh, give it to you. For example, in CET, they are subscribing to ASME and ASCE also. 
Now, yes, of, now we can see in our college, in Polytechnic College, there is Science Direct and uh, in uh, College of Engineering Trivandrum, we have these many resources. Now, I want to launch one of this publication, for example, Science Direct. I've opened Science Direct. I've clicked Science Direct. I can see the institution name already appearing on the top brought to you by College of Engineering Trivandrum. If an institution is subscribing to other resources apart from Science Direct, for example, ASME or even ASE, let this platform also open. On the Science Direct platform, uh, uh, Mr. Vishal Gupta is there with us. He will give a detailed training at the end of the session. You can uh, wait for another uh, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, so you can see how you extensively you can use the platform and what is the advantage that it brings to our table. We can see them, we'll see uh, we, uh, Mr. Vishal Gupta, Gupta will uh, demonstrate that to us. On the other hand, you can see here, ASME, College of Engineering Trivandrum. I can see the institution name on top. Again, in ASCE, American Society of Civil Engineers, you can see College of Engineering Trivandrum. In a single ID password, in a single login ID password, a user can use all the resources that the institution is subscribing to. In a single click, they just have to open and they'll get to see that they are already logged in to their institutional ID. So that's how easy it will become. And from here, if a user wants to access certain content, they can easily go into it and they can access certain content. Apart from that, what more the library can do? I'm going back to the home. Let me go into the Polytechnic College and also I'll open this also and show it to you. Government Women's Polytechnic College. Again, I can see. I've used multiple IPs, so it is picking up uh, the existing Science Direct itself. But nevertheless, you will get to see your institution name, Government Women's Polytechnic College Coli Code. You will get to see your institution name on Science Direct. Let me go into home again. Now, as a, as a, as a, a user, yes, of course, we are subscribing to Science Direct. But are we Science Direct has got lots and lots of content, academic content for our research. Do we have full text access to all the content? The answer is no. We have access to full text content to a specific package. We have access to a specific package where we have full text access. How to know that? You can quickly go to catalog. Now, in polytechnic colleges, what do you have? In polytechnic colleges, what is the content that we have? We have Science Direct at subscribed content, and also we have 22 other resource sources openly available, open content. These are all authentic, academic, peer-reviewed content, so it can be used for your research and learning purposes. Now, I'm me as a user, imagining I am a user from Government Women's Polytechnic College, and I, I want to access the full text content from Science Direct. What I can do is simply click on Go to Catalog, and you can click on to Science Direct. What is basically cataloging? Cataloging is uh, basically curating the content based on certain parameters. Now we have curated the content based on three parameters. Number one, we have curated the content by alphabetical order. For example, if a person wants to understand heat transfer, they can go to H directly. Or if a person is looking for internet of things, they can go for uh, I. Artificial intelligence, they can go to A. So we have grouped the content based on alphabetical order. And by source also we have grouped. Now we have only Science Direct. Maybe in the future, we will add more resources to the subscribed content. And when you click on to the content, now I've clicked on to Science Direct. Let's see what the system had to say now. I've clicked on to Science Direct. <clears throat> so in Science Direct, we have, uh, this is inclusive of even open content also, but you can see here, there are 430 content which is available for us, which includes both uh, paid and openly available content. Let me open. You can also see the tags on the top, which says that premium or paid content, and you can also see open here. And if I want to open one of the journal from here, and you can see there are 425 journals and there are five ebooks. Now, let me open this particular journal, maybe Advanced uh, Engineering Informatics is the journal that I want to open. I've clicked on to read. Uh, uh, Karthik, can you confirm me? There's a pop-up window. It is open. Can you see the window? Uh, 
Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So as you can see, I've opened Advanced Engineering Informatics. I can see the in, in, uh, institution name also on top. And when I scroll down, I can see the latest published articles, all full text, which is available. You can see full text, full text content which is available and top cited so this is basically the journal page so about the science direct uh, uh, platform Mr. Vishal Gupta will take you in detail but to open a full text content for example I have gotten to this particular journal called advanced engineering informatics and that a lot of articles are published and I'm a little interested in uh, uh, most downloaded or uh, uh, more latest published. Maybe I'll go to most downloaded. These are all open. So maybe I'll keep it in latest published itself. I want to open this particular article. Let me open this particular article. It is recently published, January 2022, recently published. And I click off button. You can also download that particular PDF also. It's a 15 page article, as you can see, the article has been, it's the latest published article. It's a full text content, which is available for you. You can see the entire article has been opened for your person. So it gives you both online reading and offline reading. I have downloaded for on offline reading. I can save it to my local system and I can use it whenever I need. So I with, with, in a single click, I went into the platform or if you want to select a particular content, for example, electronics sorry from the 430 content i want to pick a specific content specific keyword that i'm looking for so there are 13 items which you can see electronics related so i have a, a, a journal here called computers and electronics in agriculture so i want to read this particular uh, journal so I can open quickly and I can download articles from that particular journal also so these are all full text content so it's important for a user to know the, what is the content that is subscribed by the institution because what happens is a lot of time our user going into a specific platform they try to download a content which is not subscribed which is not part of the package and it will ask them to pay. So they immediately come to the admin and say, sir, it has not been, sir, it is asking me to pay. So having a library will also tell them, have, going through the catalog will also give them a knowledge saying that, okay, so much of content is there for me to full text. Remaining content I have at an abstract level consumption. So top cited content, researchers would be very interested to see these uh, top cited content. And I want to open evolution of internet of things is what I want to open. So I'm opening evolution of internet of things. I can see is there for me to view PDF. If you leave for some time, you can, you can also view the entire article uh, online. And if you want to download in a click of a button, you can also download the same to your system. Okay. Now I'll go back to the home. Now, what more could you do? And now I'll go to the uh, same. It all works the same. The platforms works the same. So I'm, I'm a little shuffling between platforms because I understand there are users who have come from engineering college also and polytechnic colleges also. And uh, I'm, I'm now I'm in uh, 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 a CET now. Now I'll quickly give a keyword. Now, me as a user, now, as I told you, the content that we are going to fetch is it's 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 all subscribed from science direct but what if we want to also access from open access content and go to a specific source all that you have to do is put in the keyword in the search box that is there in your library for example um or mechanics is a keyword that i want wanted to uh, given so the moment i've given mechanics there are 325 results which i can see and these 325 results are coming from these many sources where you can see uh, from science direct from nimbus open ebooks journals there are a few open collections also which is coming in and asme ace asme ace is subscribed by uh, cet uh, 
from the institution. So from that also, it's picking the content. And as a user, they will also get to see other filters here. Out of this 325 results, how many of them are subscribed? There are 24 results that are subscribed, 301 that are open. And out of the 325 results, uh, 164 are journals, 157 are ebook, and there are multimedia video contents also. Now, as a user, they can redefine search for a content from within the uh, search and they can fetch the right literature. So that's how easy it will become for them. There is also a few multimedia content which is also available which can be there are course materials we have added there are video content like lectures we have added for specific subjects so the users can make use of them also apart from the subscribed and open content so now we we'll we have got to know that from uh, the library from the from this digital library you can access to science direct uh, subscribed content from science, science direct and there is also a pool of open content these open content are from academic sources peer reviewed uh, content uh, authentic authoritative contents which can be used for your research works and your uh, learning purposes academic purposes you can use so you have these two con content open and subscribed the subscribed content is coming from science direct now apart from this you can also upload certain content to the platform you can upload um, uh, your institutional documents like question papers if you have you can upload your question papers if you have interesting links like if you have shwayam shodh ganga epg patshala ndl nptl doaj doab there are a lot of useful links also available those links can also be uploaded to the platform now, in a single platform, the user need not shuttle between platform to platform. In one single platform, they will get to have, get to know their subscribed content, open content. If there are institutional documents that also that can be served through the platform, if there are some useful links which 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 can be sure shared with the uh, users, that can also be added to the platform. Now, this is what from a user perspective, there are a lot of room for you to explore. Please explore this platform. Uh, there are a lot of, as you can see, there are some course materials also we have given. So the users can also use this NPTEL courses also. So please explore the platform where you can access various content, various digital content, and we'll keep adding uh, content. So please watch out the platform for more content to come in. And as I told earlier to, again, I'm re-insisting, the URL that you're going to use for engineering colleges, we have each engineering college have got uh, uh, individual links, but Polytechnic will share you a common link. Please wait for the common link to be shared. We'll share it to you soon. Now, we I'll quickly go into the admin dashboard. Now, admin dashboard is also almost, not almost, admin dash, dashboard is same for both the uh, Polytechnic and uh, Engineering College. So I'll show you from this particular dashboard itself. In this, I'm going to talk about very important piece alone, registering users, because you have to register the users. Now, when we talk about registering users, you can register the users on your own. If you find any difficulty, if you have, if you're facing any problem, you can also approach uh, the Nimbus team, the GIST team. We will help you register. We will help you register your users. But how to register yourself when you go to dashboard, when you go, go to your platform, you have an option here called librarian dashboard. You can, I mean, like when you click onto it, you will land on to your librarian dashboard like this. In your librarian dashboard, I'm going to talk about user management. Please go to user management. Please, you can also make a quick note of it. In user management, you can add the users. In CET, they have got 1,674 users I can see, which also includes uh, uh, Madam Cesar Thomas. You can see the names which have been appearing and you can see the expiry dates are given here. Now I'll talk about it in detail, how these details are appearing. For example, if I take, a particular user. Let me go to a specific user. Sri, Sri, uh, Sri Shma is a user that I want to uh, see and I can see that Sri Shma <coughs> is a student and uh, the other details are not been given. The expiry date to 2nd August 2024. After 2nd August 2024, <coughs> uh, 
uh, Srishmar cannot use the platform. The, pla the platform will become null and void. The, it get expired automatically. So you don't have to worry. Once they are out of the system, they cannot access the platform. Now, these details. How these the name, email ID, their uh, uh, expiry date, these details are coming in now. The admin have to add these details. I'm going to cover quickly only the uh, adding users here. I'm not going to take up uh, other uh, uh, fields. If we need an exclusive training on the admin dashboard, we will take up another session. We will also reach out to you individually. We can also do an exclusive session on the admin dashboard and the user portal exclusively. Now, uh, as we, have, we are running short of time, I'll quickly only talk about user registration. We are going to talk about registering users. You have to go to admin dashboard. In admin dashboard, user management. In user management, add users. When you're adding users, you can add users individually. You can see the name. You can see uh, the email ID and other details where you can see student ID, departments. I prefer, I actually, I, I, I suggest, uh, I, or I can, I can I, it's my request to all the uh, participants and admins, please give in maximum details, ex ex especially, especially departments or designation or student ID. This will help you immensely in your reports. So having a lot of only name and email ID or the com uh, or the mandatory columns, the mandatory columns in the plan in the registration uh, form is name and email ID. Why? Because email ID is the ID that the user is going to use for to log in. But having these details is going to give you a better report. So in a report, you will get to see Srishma has downloaded so-and-so document from so-and-so publication. She's from which department? She's from uh, um, uh, what's her student ID? She's from which institution? All the information that can be seen. So having these details will give you better reports, but name and email ID are mandatory. Now, this is for adding one user. If one user immediately comes to you and says, sir, I want to access the library, you can add them individually. But what if you want to add in bulk, bulk registration, you want to bulk uh, upload the users. Here, there is an option just next to single user. It's called multiple users. Now, in multiple users, you have an option to download sample CSV. Click on to download sample CSV. You will get to uh, have a sample uh, uh, CSV format. Fill in the format. In the format, you will have these columns. I'll minimize this. Okay. I guess you can see the Excel sheet here. You can see username. You can see email ID, mobile number, user type, gender, student ID department, so on and so forth. You can fill in these details. Name and email ID are mandatory. Even the, these two, name and email ID are mandatory. And other details, if you have it, it's well and good. Now fill in this particular sheet and choose the file. Save the file, choose the file and select RA and MA and then say submit. And say submit. The moment you give submit, the user will be added to the platform. It's very simple. So this is how you can add users. So adding users is the first step in the platform. Now we have created the digital library for all the users, for all the polytechnic colleges, but for all the engineering colleges, we have created the library. Now to add users, you just have to go into manage users, add users, and you can add them to the platform. That's how simple it is. You can add the users individually also in bulk also. Quickly, before giving the session to uh, Mr. Vishal Gupta, I would like to show the admin dashboard also where you can see the reports. So we, I was talking about these details, right? So you can see overall report. You, you will get to see who are the users who are using the platform wisely. You will get to see these are the users who are using the platform very uh, uh, wisely. And who are the, uh, what are the content those users are using can also be seen. So A, ACM Digital Library is used the maximum, then Science Direct followed by Springer or so on and so forth. So you can also see in this report, you'll get to see which user, for example, Venkatesh has downloaded from Springer bio, uh, three biotech 
and it's a journal. I've downloaded one download on which date I have downloaded. So these, these things you can use for any accreditation purposes also. So you, these reports are also going to be very extensive and institutional repository also. If you have added any institutional repository like Shwayam or Shodh Ganga or your question papers, theses, dissertations, your faculty notes, those can also be added to the platform that is there in the uh, library portal section and IR you can add, but this will take it exclusively in this different session because admin dashboard alone is a 45 minutes detailed session. So we will, we will come back to you again for the admin dashboard. But for now, what is that important? The priority right now is to add users. So I request the, uh, all the uh, admins of the, uh, or the management of the institution to uh, please make note of it that uh, you have access to various science direct subscribed content. Apart from that, various uh, uh, peer reviewed open collection has been added and the entire library portal is also will be given to you and you can add users to your platform. And when you're adding users, name and email ID are mandatory uh, columns. And adding users, you can add individually also in bulk also. So now I would like to stop the session right now. And I would like to open the session. Uh, uh, I mean, I'll hand over the session to um, Mr. Vishal Gupta for the Elzevia Science Direct Platform. So how to go to Elzevia Science Direct Platform? Quickly, I'll talk about that also. You just have to launch the link, cetlibrary.nimbus.com or your respective link. And for Polytechnic Colleges, we will share your respective links. When you launch the link, you may have to give in your ID and password. The moment you give ID and password, you have this option called off-campus access. Click on to Science Direct, you will get to launch the Science Direct platform. Now I've used two IPs, I mean two colleges simultaneously, so I could, I'm not able to open. But the moment you open the Science Direct platform, you will get to see the institution name. And from there on, I'll hand over to Mr. Shal Gupta how to uh, how uh, uh, you can use Science Direct and uh, what are other benefits that Science Direct platform brings to your table. So, uh, Mr. Vishal, uh, the platform is yours. Over to you. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, uh, you know, I would like to thank uh, the entire management of uh, DTE Kerala uh, for giving us an opportunity to collaborate with you and, and uh, present the Elsevier content to all these uh, institutes. And uh, we believe that uh, this subscription will definitely reach new heights and will definitely support the, the growing research in the institute and will definitely improve the quality of work. Of course, we are there. Uh, we are there to support you. Uh, we, along with the GIST team, will be there to support you uh, throughout this journey. And uh, we'll be happy to address any of your queries uh, or issues that you may have. So thank you uh, everyone for being a part of this particular session today. Uh, here, I would like to present, I, I think you all of you already are aware of people from GIST. Here are the people who work uh, for DTE Kerala uh, from Elsevier. We have Mr. Nitin Rawat, who's the regional manager, uh, Manish, who's the senior marketing manager, Mr. Pranav Shukla, who's the senior account manager, uh, and the main contact point uh, for all of you in case of uh, any issues related to Science Direct. And we also have Rohit uh, as the Solutions Manager. So the, the agenda of today's uh, session that I'm going to take very quickly is the Science Direct platform. And the tagline that we've kept for the Institute is read quality, publish quality. I think all of us here would agree that in order to publish quality articles, it is extremely critical to read quality articles as well. The more you read quality content, the more quality mindset you develop. Talking about Elsevier, Elsevier has been uh, a partner for research uh, and have been you know, supporting the research community with scholarly communication for over 140 years. And now we recognize ourselves as an information analytics company where we are committed to bring a new rigor to this generation of platforms that we have. Of course, I'm sure uh, by now all of you are aware of the Science Direct platform. Some of you have also been using uh, it, the trial version of the same uh, last year. But apart from Science Direct, you know, Elsevier has several tools uh, like Scopus, Reaccess, Engineering Village, and much more to support researchers uh, in, in their research journey. When we talk about research journey, the main thing that we'd like to talk about is the research workflow. 
And we believe that supporting researchers starts by understanding their needs. And we all understand that the needs uh, of researchers have changed over the years because of the changing research environment. You know, for example, if you go back 20 years, research used to be very single discipline focused. Uh, there was not as much collaboration. Nowadays, you know, research is highly multidisciplinary, interdisciplinary. Uh, there are high levels of collaboration happening within the Institute as well. So we need to align with all these changes. And that's where we focus on making each product that Elsevier has suitable to a particular stage of the research workflow. Not just with products. Elsevier is also there to support you with your online learning. At Elsevier, we have a free online learning platform called Elsevier Researcher Academy. Each one of you can sign into this platform for free and take up the extensive courses available on this platform for completely free of cost. And these are all certified courses. So once you complete the course, you can download a self-generated certificate for yourself as well. The courses on this platform are highly critical and, and very knowledgeable for researchers. They can develop their skills while working from home. I know it's not the same kind of experience when you are uh, you know, physically present, but you can still be at home and keep learning. So there are courses like how to find the right journal, how to write a book, how to convert your thesis into an article, how to uh, uh, you know, improve your writing skills, uh, how to know about research ethics, right? And there are other uh, you know, uh, cl you know, classic uh, webinars as well on how to do a good job search or uh, how to uh, you know, develop your career. So many important things are there that will really help you in, in further accelerating your uh, growth, research growth. Now, what we are trying to talk about today is the Science Direct platform. So DTA Kerala has subscribed to the Science Direct platform. And uh, as you could see in the previous session, how you can access Science Direct via the Nimbus platform. Uh, and, uh, you know, a major part of the issues that you face today is information overload. We all know that there is just so much information out there. And sometimes, you know, it is becomes very difficult to trust one particular kind of information. Especially, let's say, if you go to Google and you type a particular keyword, Google is a database. When you type a keyword on Google, you get millions of results. But can you trust each and every piece of information? Probably not, right? And the reason why you can't trust is because it's not peer reviewed. As researchers, what you require is peer reviewed information. And that's where Science Direct brings you that platform, which has a collection of peer reviewed content from Elsevier, one of the world's largest publisher of scientific and medical journals. Science Direct, as we all know, you know, we, we are trying to solve this particular issue that there is so much content. And, and when sometimes researchers want to focus on few platforms that can give them quality content, because we've learned in the first slide that if you read quality, you publish quality. So when you want to read quality articles, you should think about Science Direct and you should come to this particular platform. Now, what does Science Direct have? Science Direct, the entire content on Science Direct is divided into 23 subject areas that you can see on your screen. DTE Kerala subscribes to engineering and computer science subject area. But that doesn't mean that you are limited to only engineering and computer science subject collections. Most of the journals are multidisciplinary, so they cover other subject areas as well. So if you are accessing a particular journal, that same journal may lie both in engineering or it may also in, you know, in, uh, include some of the articles from material science or physics or related subject areas as well. So don't just think that you have only access to engineering or uh, computer science. You have access to a lot of content, a lot of subject areas. Secondly, each of our subject collections is divided into further categories. So if you subscribe to engineering, you are not just getting access to one or two engineering streams. You are getting access to each and every engineering stream, starting from automobile engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical, electronic, 
any field, any department you can think of will be included under the engineering package. Similarly, for uh, computer science also, we have that kind of segregation. The oldest content on Science Direct dates back to 1823. So we have content starting from 1823 till the latest content. But uh, with the arrangement that we have with DTE, you have access to content starting from 1995 onwards. So the content before 1995 is called archival content or back files, which needs to be purchased separately. So right now, if you subscribe, if you look at a journal, you will get articles, free access to articles under engineering and computer science collection from 1995 onwards. Now, the content on the Science Direct platform, as I said, uh, it's not just journals that you get. It's a unique platform. It also integrates books on the same platform. And now you might be thinking that you do not have access to books. So what is the use of that? You know, whenever we do research, uh, a lot of times we look for foundational content. So let's say we are reading an article. There are a few concepts or words that we don't understand. And, and we want to know more about it. So what do we do? We open a dictionary or we open a thesaurus or we go to Google and we try to find more information about that word. No more doing that. You can be on the Science Direct platform and keep learning, uh, getting all the foundational information from books right on this platform itself, right? And uh, when I demonstrate, I'm going to show you how you can access that kind of information as well. Now, because of all these reasons, the quality content, Science Direct is one of the most preferred publishers globally. If you look at the global uh, publishing trends, 18% of all the publications across the globe is on the Science Direct platform. So people prefer to publish with Elsevier. If you look at the citation share, these 18% articles fetch 25% of the world's total citations. So Elsevier articles are highly cited. And then when you look at reference share, if you go to any institute, if you go to any uh, you know, research in intensive institute or any author, the maximum references that they use is from Elsevier, which tells you that it is uh, the research community across the world acknowledges and prefers Elsevier content over other publishers. And this is the only reason behind it is quality. Again, to emphasize a little bit on the quality, you are subscribing to two subject collections. As you can see, uh, the dotted line on both the graphs represents the number one. One means world average quality. So you see both the cases, Elsevier's average world quality is, is above one, and it also publishes the maximum number of articles, right? Unlike other publishers that have a little amount of content, but if you look at the overall average quality, Elsevier has much, much higher quality. And as I said earlier, we have both journals and books on the same platform, which helps users get both foundational content and access to original research content on the same platform. Having journals and books on the same platform really helps researchers fill the knowledge gap, get an extensive knowledge about the particular product, know more about uh, you know, research that is happening and get their concepts clear, which is extremely critical for young research scholars and students as well. Right. So with this, uh, I will now take you directly uh, live to the platform. Uh, if someone can just confirm me once I share my screen. Can you just confirm me if I am on the Science Direct homepage? Karthikeyan or anyone? Go ahead, Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So this is the Science Direct homepage as, as shown to you in the earlier presentation, you know, how you can access. So there are a multiple of ways. Uh, you can definitely access it through Nimbus, uh, but, uh, you know, and especially when you are working remotely. But if you are in the Institute organized Institute itself under the IP, you can also directly go to www.sciencedirect.com because the access is provided on your IP. Please note that if you're working from home, you need to use the Nimbus platform for remote access and access these resources accordingly. Secondly, what we are able to see on this platform is I think some of you already know about this platform and what we usually do, we start putting in our keywords here and we don't look at the platform overall. So let us first see what is there on this page, what kind of information is available on this page. 
Now the entire content on Science Direct is divided into four major subject categories: Physical Sciences, Life Sciences, Health Sciences, and Social Sciences and Humanities. For each subject area, we have the other domains that is available here. So under Physical Sciences and Engineering, you have Chemical Engineering, Chemistry, Computer Science, Earth and Planetary Science, Energy, Engineering, Material Science, Mathematics, and Physics. So for each category, broader category, you are able to see the most popular articles and the most recent publications right on the screen, right? So that is, is something which is uh, available to you. If you scroll further down, you can see some online video tutorials. These are small video tutorials that have been uh, provided to you so that you can learn each and every step on the Science Direct platform. Suppose you get stuck somewhere and you don't know how to do that. These online video tutorials will help you. These are 30 second, one minute videos, short videos that will help you get past that particular barrier. Then you can also create and manage alerts on the platform. For example, you do a search and you want to set an alert for that search that, you know, because the platform is updated regularly, next time, if there is any new article that is, is published under this search, I want to get an alert. So you can set that alert on your email ID and also select the frequency at which you want to receive those alerts. Then browse by topic. So this is the Science Direct topic page that I was talking about. So if you go on to this topic page, you will be able to see some of the content that, that uh, you know, I was talking about, how to search about a particular topic. Now let's say I want to learn more about uh, mechanics. Right, so I have used the word mechanics here. <laughs> and see, it gives me some options here. So whichever type of mechanics I am interested in, you know, uh, it could be uh, computational solid mechanics in engineering. And I want to know more about this. So what I can do, I can simply click here. It takes me first of all to a page where it gives me the book definition of this particular word along with the name of the book that is mentioned the related terms to this particular word. And if you go down, you will be able to see the uh, particular sections within a book that describes this particular article and has some references to computational solid mechanics. And see, all of them is readily available to you, right? This is something which is unique to the Science Direct platform. You do not need to leave the platform to get more foundational knowledge in, in, in fact, these links are provided within the article as well. So I will show you what happens is when you are reading an article on Science Direct, you will be able to see these words which are hyperlinked and you can go straight from the article to these topic pages. So let us now search for uh, a particular word. So whenever you want to do a search on uh, Science Direct, the easiest way to do is just click here and put in your keyword, right? now. Let's say my word keyword is artificial intelligence. So right now, artificial intelligence is basically two words, artificial and intelligence. But you know, when you just write it like this and you do a search, let's do a search and see what number of results do we get. So we get close to 1,88,000 articles and you can see the top journals here, right here. Now, all these 1,88,000 articles are not for in artificial intelligence because it could be artificial heart and some other intelligence, you know. So it is not necessarily artificial intelligence. What the system does, it searches both the words separately in Science Direct, in the same article, right? If you want to, you know, make this as a single word, what you need to do, you need to put Invert, double inverted commas. And this does not apply to Science Direct only. You can also use this trick on Google and you can further refine your results. As soon as I put the inverted commas, keep a look at the number of results here and I will do a search and you see the results now are 158. So approximately 30,000 articles have been removed that were not catering to the exact phrase artificial intelligence. Right now on this platform, you can also use Boolean operators. So let's say I want to use and big data. So I can use and or and not. So this, uh, when you use the Boolean operators, now you see the number of results further going down. I can also use another and, let's say and big data and internet of things. Now what the system will do, it will only search those articles 
that have all the three keywords in the same article. So that makes your search even more specific, even more unique. So now you have 5,000 articles. So for, from 1,80,000 articles, we have now reached 5,3,96 5, articles. This is the first way you can filter. Then on the left-hand side, we have also provided you other kind of filters, which you can then use to further narrow down your search and reach the desired you know, appropriate uh, uh, content that you want to reach out. Now for every article, before you want to download, let's say uh, you, you just don't want to download everything. You want to read before you want to download. So you can click on this abstract link given on your, this page. Once you click here, it will show you the abstract. You can read the abstract. If you feel that this article is important, you can then go and download. This download PDF option will be available for all articles that will have full text access to, which will be mentioned here. In case you do not have full text access, it will show you a link, which uh, will, will, will uh, you know, show here either purchase PDF or it will show get access. And it will show here that you do not have access to this particular content, right? Now, let me open one article for, for you and show you how this looks like. So this is how you know you are able to see that article. Uh, you are able to see the recommended articles here, which means the articles that are very similar to this article. So if you are reading this article, this might also be important. So it also gives you suggestions. It also gives you citing articles, which means these are the three articles that have cited this particular article. You can see them as well. On the left-hand side, you can see the full outline of this paper. So in case I just want to see the conclusion, I can click here it will take me directly to the conclusion. So it's a very intuitive platform, not just a mere PDF providing platform. Uh, if you want to look at any images and tables, see all the supplementary information is mentioned here. Uh, and then, you know, you have the entire paper to yourself to read, right? So this is again, something, you know, one of the uh, features of this particular platform. Now, if you want to know what is there that is accessible to you, what are the journals and books available on the platform? All you need to do is click on top here under journals and books. So it will open this particular site. So see this particular website has 4,523 journals in total and more than 32,000 books. On the left hand side, again, you can see some filters. So if you are in the Institute IP, if you click on subscribed and complimentary, you will be able to see all the journals that are subscribed to you by your Institute and all the free journals that are available. Right. If you click on open access as well, this will show you the entire content and not just engineering or computer science. So all the content that is available to you on the Science Direct platform. So as I said earlier, all the content is divided into subject areas. So see here, you can broadly classify it under a particular subject area. Let's say engineering. And now under engineering, I can click on subdomain and I can see all the different streams of engineering listed out here. So we have all the types of engineering. Let's say if I am a student of mechanical engineering and I want to know which are the journals under mechanical engineering, I can just click here. So it, right now it shows me 621 publications. Now publications may mean either a journal or a book. So on the left hand side, you have these filters. So let's say you are only interested in journals. So I click here and now it shows me 110 journals. These are the 110 journals that cater to mechanical engineering. If I want to uh, open any of this particular journals, let's say uh, applied acoustics. So I open this particular journal. Now what it shows me on this journal is the site score and the impact factor. So some, you know, most of the researchers are interested to know what is the impact factor uh, and, and the site score. So site score is Elsevier's metric, similar to impact factor. You can see both uh, the, the uh, metrics here. Then if you click here, you will be able to see the latest issues uh, of this article, any linked data sets that this article has about the aims and scope of the journal, the complete editorial board, the abstract and indexing format, any news or announcements. And then if you wish to publish in this journal, there is a direct link available here where you can submit your article online directly to the journal. There is also a guide for authors, which I highly recommend each one of you to read before you even think of publishing in that particular journal. And then you also have open access options. So 
if the journal supports open access and if you wish to publish in open access mode you can read this open access options it will show you all the information so you know a lot of you have confusion that journals charge money to publish all journals do not charge money to publish you know so uh, there are two kinds of journals one is open access journal that charge you money and another type is the predatory journals that charge you money right the subscribed journals that are available which is 80% of the entire journal community they do not charge a fee you can publish for free in a subscribed journal uh, and and that's the way to go uh, further you can see who's the editor in editor in chief and click here and look at the entire editorial board you can also look at the latest published articles in this journal this is extremely critical because you want to understand what the journal's current interest is and that's what will it will show you so see there are articles published from 28 february 2022 but you might be thinking that they has not yet arrived these are early access articles articles that have been accepted by the journal but are not yet out in print so you are able to get first hand access to these articles as well which keeps you updated which helps you in designing your paper as well then you can also see the top cited articles in this particular journal the most downloaded articles from this particular journal and the most popular articles which means these are the ones that are recently being cited a lot so a lot of information about a particular journal see if there are any call for papers you will see it right here under call for papers news announcements everything is mentioned here so and and then you can also track your accepted paper from here we also have a link to the journal finder so if you uh, uh, i don't know how many of you have seen this but let me show you this journal finder as well every publisher has a journal finder on your screen now you will be able to see the elsevier journal finder if you wish to publish in any elsevier journal all you need to do is go to this particular link click here type in your paper title abstract keywords and field of research then you can further refine your search by using options so let's say you are not interested to publish in open access which means you are not interested to pay so you can click and you know switch off this particular option and you can set your benchmarks for site score and impact factor and then also you can send your bench set your benchmarks for review and publication time so let's say you want to get your first decision within 4 uh, weeks so you can put the filters accordingly it will only show you those journals that give the first decision in 4 weeks and will exclude the others so your question which journals can we go for fast publication this is the answer you can go to the journal finder and it can help you find elsevier journals that will really help you in uh, understanding the uh, journals and and what kind of uh, uh, publication method they have uh, what kind of apc that they charge in open access what is the metrics lot of information here so if you are interested to publish with elsevier please visit this particular platform that's it i think uh, for now uh in this initial uh, you know search the initial training i think this is a lot of overwhelming information what i will request all of you now is to at least go on to the platform once if you haven't been to the platform try and explore some of the articles using some of the keywords here and try and download a few articles and see whether you can download read the full text and and have a good user experience right so thank you for your patient listening uh, if there are any questions you may please unmute and uh, me and the gist team will be happy to answer them thank you thank you thank you vishal uh, now uh, quickly there's a we have come to the end of the session and uh, before ending the session there is a one small piece that we have uh, missed just give me a second the piece that uh, we have missed is the mobile application so now the entire platform that we spoke about in nimbus can be accessed in mobile application also so kindly uh, go to your respective uh, play store it is available for both ios and android users go to your respective play stores if you are a um, android user use your google play store if you are an um, ios user you use your apple store download this particular app to your mobile kindly download m library without space m library together it's one single word 
So download this particular app to your mobile and use the same ID password. Is your email ID and the password, whatever we are using for a desktop or laptop, the web platform. Use it for your mobile application also. You will get to access the all the subscribed open content with the search option with my library. The entire platform can be accessed to your mobile application also. So M library is the app that you have to use to access the uh, digital library and uh, web platform. Of course, you can use the URL that has been given. Now uh, we have come to the end of the session. Now, if there are any questions, you can uh, ask. Uh, even if you have any specific question in Science Direct, you can ask Mr. Vishal, who's also there with us in the platform. And if you have any questions related to Nimbus, remo uh, uh, Nimbus Digital Library, that also you can put it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and you can ask your questions. So we'll be more than happy to answer. Soon we will also do uh, individual uh, institution-wise training. We will soon come back to you. We can uh, club in two or three institutions together, or we can individually, we can give institution uh, various admin trainings and user trainings. We'll come back to you soon. And uh, today was a great session. And I guess if there are no questions, if there are any questions, you can uh, unmute yourself and you can ask a question. Or you can also use the chat box. Yes, uh, so when we share the mail, we will share you the uh, recorded uh, video also. Yes, of course, Mr. Pratip, we can definitely will share the video with you. I guess uh, there is uh, um, no much question. There is no other questions, I guess. I could not see any questions from the chat box also. So, okay, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for joining, especially thank you, Vasiza ma'am, uh, for uh, addressing the gathering and being with us uh, today and uh, making this uh, 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 session a valuable one. And uh, thank you, Mr. Vishal, for your uh, thoughtful insights on uh, Xavier Science Direct. And uh, that was a useful session. And I hope the session was a useful one to all other participants also. And we look forward for more such uh, uh, events and uh, training which is coming up in the, in the future. And we are there to assist you and help you in every possible way that we can. Thank you so much uh, once again to everyone. And uh, stay tuned for more such events. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Sisa ma'am, uh, if you have a few yeah. words. Yeah. So, I think it was an exhaustive se session. And uh, do I need to say anything more? <laughs> you have said uh, <laughs> enough, ma'am. Thank you. We have, we have to, you have given us uh, the, the insights. Itself, I have thanked everyone. Yes, so exactly. Exactly, uh, ma'am. Thank I you so much. Yeah. Exactly. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Such an honor to have you today. Thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward for uh, many more such events like this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Many thanks and uh, a special thanks to Sisa, ma'am, and uh, Venkatesh from Nimbus and all the Nimbus team and uh, DT Kerala team. And also uh, to Mr. Vishal Gupta and the Delsevi team. Thanks to all the participants and take care, stay safe. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everyone. Bye.